This video is an instructional tool owned by the Division of Negros Oriental. The division acknowledges the intellectual property rights of the owner of the pictures, illustrations, music, and other similar materials used. This video is made to address the need of grade 12 learners of Negros Oriental, especially in this time of pandemic. everyone how are you doing i hope that you are staying safe and healthy through these unusual times by the way i am teacher jovet and welcome to organization and management subject in the first module of the first quarter and together let's unravel and understand thoroughly the definition the functions the types as well as the theories of management so what are you waiting for? Grab your notes, relax, and enjoy learning. In a group, school club, or school organization, there is always a leader who will manage the group. Now, what do you think are the functions of a leader? Actually, there are different functions that are being performed by every leader in a group or organization. And all of those functions will be carefully discussed as we go along with our lesson. Let us now identify these jumbled letters as a short review. Instructions. Identify the jumbled letters using the following hints. Number one, this is a type of management which is a one-way leadership where there is a single authority? The answer is autocratic. Correct! Number two. This involves evaluating and if necessary, correcting the performance of the individuals or work groups or teams to ensure that they are all working toward the previously set goals and plans of the organization. The answer is controlling. Very good! Number 3. This is the process of making plans for something. Planning is the correct answer. Number 4. This is the fourth function of management. The answer is leading. Very good! Number 5. This is a non-stop process of ensuring continuity and growth within an organization. The answer is management. Good job! Number 6. This described as the practice of training people to obey rules. Discipline is the correct answer. Awesome! Number 7. This demands assigning tasks, setting aside funds, and bringing harmonious relations among the individual and work group or teams in the organization. The answer is organizing. Excellent! Number 8. This indicates filling in the different job positions in the organization's structure. The answer is staffing. Fantastic! Now that you are already familiar with a few terms of this lesson, let us now define management and its functions. Management is a process of coordinating and overseeing the work performance of individuals working together in organizations so that they can efficiently accomplish their chosen aims or goals. It is also defined as the process of designing and maintaining an environment for efficiently accomplishing selected aims.
These are the functions of management. Planning. Planning involves determining the organization's goals or performance objectives, defining strategic actions that must be done to accomplish them, and developing coordination and integration activities. Organizing. This management function demands assigning tasks, setting aside funds, and bringing harmonious relations among the individual and work group or teams in the organization. Staffing Staffing indicates filling in the different job positions in the organization's structure. The factors that influence this function include size of the organization, types of jobs, number of individuals to be recruited, and some internal or external pressures. Leading. This management function entails influencing or motivating subordinates to do their best so that they would be able to help the organization's endeavor to attain their set goals. Controlling. Controlling involves evaluating and, if necessary, correcting the performance of the individuals or work groups or teams to ensure that they are all working toward the previously set goals and plans of the organization. Let us all ponder that in order for these five functions to be accomplished, management should have a process of coordination, efficiency, and effectiveness, which is intrinsic to the nature of management. These five functions of management will go to waste if these three processes are not practiced by the organization's appointed leaders or managers. Now that you already know the different functions of management, let us now define the different types of management. Autocratic. In an autocratic type of management, there is a one-way leadership where there is a single authority. Team members are only there to follow orders. The employees are given rewards for a job well done but are given punishment if they fail. This management style is beneficial in times of crisis that needs immediate attention. On the other hand, it causes the staff to fear. They need to be closely supervised and a poor relationship would be evident among the team. Persuasive. In this type of management, the manager has a strong and centralized controlling business decisions like the autocratic type of management. What differs is that in a persuasive type, the manager convince with his colleagues before he decides. Employees are motivated not anymore by rewards and punishment, but by persuasive techniques. Consultative. In a consultative style of management, leaders and workers have a two-way communication. Team members share their opinion in solving issues of the company. Consequently, the practice is costly, slow in decision-making, and an important changes are delayed. Participative In this category of management, there is a distribution of authority and power. The company's project is a shared responsibility and each member has a self-direction. You may think that management may be something new to you, but there are a lot of things that you may already have done or practiced before related to management during your school days or even at home. In any business organization, its success is the direct result of a good management. It may be autocratic, persuasive, consultative, or participative. It is the responsibility of the managers or leaders to ensure that his or her actions should be geared towards business growth 
and sustainability. Managers must constantly review if he or she was able to follow the five functions of management. It is expected from them to make necessary adjustments to correct immediately problems or conflicts in the business. Now that you're already acquainted with the different functions and types of management, let us now talk about the different theories of management. Scientific Management Theory Frederick W. Taylor, the father of scientific management, is the proponent of this theory. This theory uses the scientific method, which is a step-by-step -step identification, to determine the best way to do a job, and not by experience. This theory also focuses on assigning workers based on their aptitudes, training, and developing them while monitoring their performances as well, and dividing the workload between managers and workers. Henry Fayol's General Administrative Theory This theory concentrates on the manager's functions and what makes up good practice or implementation. Henry Fayol believes that management is an activity that all organizations must practice and view it as a separate from all other organizational activities, such as marketing, finance, research and development, and others. Weber's Bureaucracy Max Weber is a German sociologist who wrote this theory in the early 90s, which is ideal for organizations, especially the large ones, in which one must have authority structures and coordination with others based on what he referred to as bureaucracy. According to Weber, bureaucracy is an organizational form distinguished by the following components. Number one, division of labor. Number two, hierarchical identification of job positions. Number three, detailed rules and regulations. And number four, impersonal connections with one another. Organizational behavior approach. This management theory involves in the study of the conduct, demeanor, or action of people at work. Research and behavior helps managers carry out their functions leading, team building, resolving conflict, and others. There are different strategies of management that are already used in different organizations. But let us always remember where it all started and who are the great authors of these theories.
Great! Now that you already know the definition, functions, types, as well as the theories of management, this will help and guide you in your future career. Please don't forget what you have learned today. Once again, this is Teacher Jovet saying, Ang Batang Alerto sa Numero Ganado! Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye!